So you wanna to learn to code, but chances are you're gonna fail. And today I'm gonna to talk about reasons why. And the last reason is gonna upset some people. I'm Eric Wise from Skill Foundry, where we teach people to code the right way. Now consider that in spite of the short-term difficulties we've had in the marketplace, we are still on track to need an additional 200,000 developers per year through 2030. And yet, college degree programs and coding boot camps are graduating only a fraction of that. And then you have all the self-learners. There is more free information out there about coding at this point in time than there has ever been. There are YouTube tutorials with millions of viewers. And yet, in spite of that, in spite of millions of viewers, we still have a shortage. And that means that the vast majority of those people are not making the transition from learning to code to being a professional. The majority of people are failing. Now, the first reason people fail is a lack of good programming meta skills. And these are logic, problem solving, and pattern recognition. Now, the good news is that these skills can be trained. The bad news is that if you haven't spent any time training these skills before you try to learn to code, you are going to have a miserable time learning. And there are lots of ways to develop these skills. In fact, it's one of the reasons why there's a strong correlation between gamers and programmers, because board games and video games teach problem solving, logic, and pattern recognition during the gaming sessions. And this is something you can start doing on your own. Or if you're not into gaming, think about taking discrete math or philosophy courses or anything that requires critical thinking and problem solving. It will really help you out. You can even do single player activities like Sudoku or crossword puzzles. But either way, if you are weak at those skills and have the self-reflection to admit that, there are a lot of activities you can start doing to train your brain before you jump into coding. Because the people that just jump right in regardless, they get frustrated really early because they lack these basic meta skills, and then they think that they're too dumb and they quit. And they're not too dumb. Lots of people can learn to code, but not without developing those meta skills. Another reason people fail to learn to code is because they treat it like school. And in school, memorization and regurgitation are important things to getting good grades. In programming, memorization is nearly useless. Sure, you're going to memorize the syntax that you use on a day-to-day -day basis, but everything else involved in programming is recognizing patterns being able to read and apply documentation, and building an application through trial and error. Memorization just isn't important. And too many learners get really hung up on trying to memorize everything instead of focusing on the patterns and how to build applications, and it slows them down to the point where they get demoralized and they quit. So memorization is much less important than pattern recognition and you build up strong pattern recognition by writing code. And that's why a lot of the online courses that are video only or tutorials where you follow along and parrot what somebody is typing are some of the most ineffective ways to learn coding. Sure, show and tell is a great way to get started with a topic, but if you don't step back and practice on your own against problems that aren't guided, you are not going to build the pattern recognition that is needed to solve increasingly complex problems. The next failure point is a lack of consistency. Learning any skill well requires regular, consistent effort. Too many people in the self-paced world tend to try to dump things into marathon sessions where they code seven hours one day and then take a week off. Well, when you do that, you start to forget the lessons that you learned. 
and the patterns that you noticed. You are much better off coding one to two hours a day while learning than you are doing it in bursts. Another big reason people fail to learn to code is a lack of discipline. Learning to code is a process. You need to start from a solid foundation and build advanced concepts on top of that. There are a lot of people out there who lack the patience to do that. They want to build something flashy. They want to build something that they can show their friends. So they go dive into more advanced concepts and frameworks before they've mastered the basics. And because their foundation is shaky, that tends to lead to a lot of frustration, misunderstanding, and failure, which again leads them to quit. Now to wrap things up, let's talk about the reason that's gonna make people upset. One of the main reasons why the majority of people fail to learn to code professionally is because they're not willing to invest in their own success. I'm in the education business, and I have personally seen the impact that a structured curriculum, a good mentor, and accountability can have on somebody's ability to learn and learn quickly. But there is a very noisy crowd out there that says, hey, you can learn to code for free. And you know what? They're right. You can learn to code for free. In fact, you can learn almost anything for free. Just go to a library. So why are there all these paid courses and boot camps and colleges and things like that if everybody can learn for free? And it comes down to human nature. Now to help make my point, Let's talk about physical fitness, because you can get in great shape for free. All you have to do is have the discipline to do cardio and strength training, and you don't even need equipment to do that. So why do gyms and personal trainers exist? Why are they so popular? Why is it a growing segment of the economy? The answer is that the majority of people need accountability, encouragement, and mentorship to be successful and you typically get none of these things from free resources. Now this plays out in the massively online open courseware space like edX and Coursera. They have free courses. Some of those courses are really good, but they average about a 4% completion rate. And why is that? It's because human nature, even on a short scale, it is very difficult to stay consistent and motivated when you're alone by yourself on an island. Plus, people tend to value what they pay for. So when something is free, it's very easy to justify walking away or taking an extended break or otherwise sabotaging your goal. And if you do some digging, you will find that most self-paced learners take anywhere from 1.5 to three years to go from zero to employed. And that represents effort of around 1,000 to 3,000 hours. It can vary pretty widely because the free path means you're stitching things together yourself. And you can go down rabbit holes and you can get distracted and you can take breaks because you get burned out. And all of that just adds up over time, making it a free but very slow process. Now, alternatively, what colleges, apprenticeships, coding boot camps, and online courseware have shown us is that with the right guidance and mentorship, people can complete this journey in around six to 12 months and around 900 hours of effort, which is a significant difference. And this is where my experience as a business owner and an entrepreneur comes into play. Because one thing I've learned about people in general is that they're really bad at assessing risk and assessing opportunity cost. So for opportunity cost, let's do some napkin math. The average starting salary for a software developer in the United States entry level is between $75,000 and $96,000 per year. So at the low end, $75,000, that represents an opportunity cost of $6,000 $250 per month that you're not employed. So when you go that free path instead of the paid path, 
all of a sudden that six months of time is worth $40,000 in lost opportunity cost from working in the field earlier. And if it takes you longer on the three year side, that opportunity cost is six figures. And then you have to factor in that these free courses and these free paths like these MOOCs, they have that 4% completion rate. So on top of the opportunity cost, you're making a big bet that you are in the 4% of the population that can actually consistently dedicate themselves to that professional goal, which is unlikely. So that wraps things up. And I wanna say that this was a very difficult video for me to make because as an entrepreneur, I'm an optimist. It's very difficult for me to tell people that they're going to fail. But if you look at the data out there and you look at all the traps and misinformation that's there, it's not really surprising that the majority of people who try coding don't succeed. So if you're serious about this journey, I implore you to find a pathway that has structure, accountability, and mentorship. If it has those things, your odds of success are going to go way up and your coding journey will be happy.